So we just learned that there are gaps in the rock record. So what can geologists do to fill those gaps? They can match rock layers or fossils from separate locations. And this, they often do this when there's unconformities, as we just read about in the previous lesson. So how could they do that? So imagine you're a geologist and you've been asked to match these rock sequences that are separated by a giant cannon down the middle. So let's look. Which rock layers have matching rock types in the two sequences? So we're gonna draw lines across to match the rock types. So see, this is like a brown lines, brown lines. So those match. So we draw a line across. Um, so let's do, let's, let's match the other ones. Here we go. So these ones match. Here's um, a red one here, um, but there's not a red one right here. There's a brown one. But I don't see the brown one over here, so I'm gonna go from here to here. Those match up. Oh, and then this this next one matches in this next brown layer here. That matches up. Um, and then here's the top of that brown layer. But hmm, here's this white one, but it's not over here. So I'm just gonna go straight from this uh, kind of grayish one over here there. Okay, so we've matched up the rock types. Now, what is the, what principle is this uh, called when we're matching up rock layers that are separated by a canyon? Remember, look back on those principles of relative age back on page 18. Which one of these principles has to do with knowing that layers are connected across? Write that principle down here for number two and then explain. Let's look over here on number three. It says the oldest rock layer has been labeled number one because we know that that's at the bottom. It's been labeled number one, they're the oldest. So let's go ahead and number the other ones, the other ages. So after number one, we're gonna work our way up. This will be number two, right here, number two, then three, four, five, and then of course six. Okay, so that's our working our way up uh, through the ages there. What geologic principle is this that we just did starting from the bottom and working our way up? What principle is that? And can you explain to me how you know that principle? Now, let's go ahead and look at some rocks over here. Now let's pretend that these rocks are from two different continents. So let's answer these questions down here. So let's look at the rock types. Are any of these rock types similar? We've got some lighter, uh, lighter color here, but there's no lighter colored over here. There's this like colorful stripes, but none over here. And this like purpley one, but not over here. And looking at the rock types, there's none of them match up. So write that right down here, number four. None of the rock types uh, seem to match up. They're just not the same types of rocks, probably because they're from different continents. Maybe there's a volcano on one side and it's uh, the other one has really old rock. It's hard to say, not knowing the exact locations these rocks are from, but no, they're not the same. So number five asks you to match the fossils. This we can do. So we're gonna draw lines connecting the same fossils. So like, oh, hey, this fossil and this one, they match up. So let's go ahead and draw these lines here, showing that, oh look, this is probably made about the same time, because those are the same fossils. Here's the same fossils. So these were probably lived about the same time. Um, this one's over here, but I don't see it over here. But then these two are the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and match up this, and of course the top here. So, those rock layers are probably gonna be around the same age because the same animals lived at that same time. Finally, number six says, notice that there are some rock layers missing, like this rock layer is not over here, but this must have lived at some time on this continent. So what must have happened uh, on, over here to have this whole chunk just disappear? Now, if you're not sure, Look back at page 33. What did we learn about might happen to some of these layers? What happens to layers? How do they disappear? Answer that question for number six. Okay, let's go ahead and turn to page 36. 
and we're going to talk about correlation. Here we go. So correlation, this is a great, great word. Geologists use this word to really, really give them the clues that they really need because they are matching rock layers or fossils from different locations. They really rely on these fossils because the rock type is probably not going to be the same, but the formations that contain these fossils should be the same age. So the scientists, they know if they find these fossils, they're probably the same age. And there's some special kind of fossils that are very, very useful. And they have a special name. They're called index fossils. So an index fossil is a type of fossil that represents a species that existed on Earth just for a short period of time, but they were everywhere. They were all over and they inhabited many locations. So let's look at this little time chart here and um, let's see which ones appear to be good index fossils. So we wanna look for something that is during a short period of time. So what can we write down here for good index fossils? Let's see here. Well, the trilobite only lived for a short period of time. So go ahead and write down trilobite. That was a very short period of time. Write that down. What's another short period of time? Ah, the brachiopod. Yeah, that's a good index fossil. Oh, the crinoid, very short period of time. And then this would not be good, the coelacanth, because it's so long. Same with the horseshoe crab. They live for so long, not a good index fossil. What's another short period of time one? How about these giant ammonites? Yeah, short period of time. Those are a great index fossil. So once again, let's write down trilobite, brachiopod, crinoid, and giant ammonites. And why are they such great index fossils? Because they only lived on Earth during a short period of time. So if we find them, we know when they lived and we know how old those rocks are. Our last section at the bottom here is talking about correlation. I really want you guys to highlight this last statement here about the correlation of fossils and rock layers. This really helps in relative dating of rock sequences. These geologists are able to understand the history of lots of geographic regions throughout the world and really give Earth's timeline some really specific ordering.